Hey, little booktube, I'm here to do the Amplify Voices tag, uh, Black Lives Matter. Uh, this is a tag created by uh, Jenny Johnston. Uh, is a tag for for white booktubers to do to amplify black voices because um, speaking for myself, I doubt if I have very much constructive on my own to put to the conversation. Uh, and so this is a really good time for us to uh, listen to to voices that have a lived experience in that and have, uh, I think on BookTube, have, have kind of um, put their voices into an artistic mode of uh, this is could be a, you, you could do this as a poem, an essay, a novel. Uh, I've decided to select a novel. Uh, it's Washington Black by S.A. Adugan. Um, S.A. Adugan uh, was born in Calgary, Alberta uh, from, by, uh, from uh, parents who are from Ghana. Uh, she is now uh, she now lives um, in the town where I am right at the moment, uh, Victoria, B.C., uh, and, um, is, you know, I feel so, some somewhat funny about selecting her. Uh, part of why I'm selecting her is because I'm reading her at the moment. I'm reading Washington Black at the moment. I'm about halfway through, uh, and, um, kind of casting about like, well, what am I going to select? It's like, well, let's select what I'm reading at the moment. Uh, Washington Black is, uh, a Giller winning, uh, novel by Essie. Uh, she's actually, she is, this is why it's one of the reasons I feel funny about selecting her is she is of, she is somebody who has won the Giller prize, which is a big prize in Canada twice. But that said, I think it's someone who is, it's someone it's worth that even more people read, read her work. So, uh, Washington Black is set in, uh, starts at least in 1830, uh, in Barbados on a slave pan plantation, uh, called Faith. And, uh, I think what I will do is I will read the, uh, opening, opening bits of this, uh, and then I'll just sort of leave it there. I was tagged in this by, I don't know if I even said that at the beginning, by Sean the Book Maniac. Uh, thank you, Sean, for uh, tagging me in this. Uh, Sean and I are doing a read-along at the moment of uh, James uh, Dashuk's nonfiction work, uh, Clearing the Plains, uh, kind of, it's a, and which is a tale of basically how the plains were cleared of, cleared of or made way all the, the native population uh, was cleared for Canada as it now is to exist. Uh, and, uh, um, I, 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 I think of that book when I'm reading, uh, Wash Washington Black and, uh, the treatment that, uh, these, uh, uh, these, um, black people are put through, through what is, I think, a lot of the other, the system, um, a part of what I want to listen to um, from uh, the black voices is just that the idea of uh, being a nice white person isn't really enough. Uh, there needs to be systematic change, uh, but I'm also really aware of, I think I get even more aware when situations like this come up and you suddenly, as a, as a white person, are confronted with just how shitty and how a, the system is rigged against people of, of, of color. Uh, whether that is black people or native people and how unaware I am of it and how easily it is to slip out of it again. Uh, but that these are the voices we are going to need to listen to to make actual, uh, really, really fundamental uh, changes uh, to, to, to what, where we are right now. Uh, and I'm structural, structural changes. Uh, and whether, you know, as whether as white people, who benefit from this system, whether we are actually able to, uh, actually able to, um, make that do that. Um, like, are we really, are we really, really? And it's like, I, I have to ask that. I'm going to, that's one of these questions I have to ask myself as much as I have to ask other people. Um, so yeah, that said, Washington black is George Washington black, a, uh, young slave boy, uh, who is a prodigy as well. Uh, and this is his, uh, is, 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 a, it's a slave narrative, an escape narrative, it seems. Uh, it's, uh, also a, um, I think they call it, it gets referred to as a building's room. It's, um, it's, 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 it's his development, uh, as a, uh, as a, as a, as a artistic, spiritual human being, uh, in this, in this novel.
Uh, let me just read this and then I will leave you with that. Nothing. I will, I will not torture you more. So this is, yes, part one, this first opening, opening paragraphs of Washington Black by S.A. Adugan. So, yes, part one, Faith Plantation, Barbados, 1830. And this is uh, written in the voice of, of, of Washington Black. Uh, number one, I might have been 10, 11 years old. I cannot say for certain when my first master died. No one grieved him. In the fields we hung our heads, keening, grieving for ourselves and the estate sale that must follow. He died very old. I saw him only at a distance, stooped, thin, asleep in a shaded chair on the lawn, a blanket at his lap. I think now he was like a specimen preserved in a bottle. He had outlived a mad king, outlived the slave trade itself, had seen the fall of the French Empire and the rise of the British and the dawn of the Industrial Age, and his usefulness surely had passed. On that last evening, I remembered crouching on my bare heels in the stony dirt of Faith Plantation and pressing a palm flat against Big Kit's calf, feeling the heat of her skin baking up out of it, the strength and power of her, while the red sunlight settled in the cane all around us. Together, silent, we watched as the overseers shouldered the coffin down from the great house. They slid it, rasping, into the straw of the wagon and, dropping the rail into place with a bang, rode rattling away. That was how it began, me and Big Kit watching the dead go free. I'll leave you with that.